Good morning, guys, gals, and non-binary pals. It is Thursday morning. I just wrapped the last episode, so I'm gonna go ahead and post that up here. In case you haven't seen it yet, you can watch that one and then come back to this one before we get too far into it. It is Thursday, and it's going to be our last non-hell day Thursday for the foreseeable future. I was just mentioning in the last episode that starting next week, we're finally beginning with our new in-person therapist. But right now, her only availability is Thursday afternoons. He already has two things scheduled on Thursday. And he's used to those two things and then being done for the day. So now he's going to have a third thing. And that third thing is going to be something that he's going to have to not phone in. Because the person's going to be right there in front of you. She did say that if we must change to Wednesday. She could try to figure that out in her schedule and I let her know that that's a very real possibility because we both agree that if he's just over it Thursday afternoons and he's not willing to participate and like really make the session like worth it then there's no point. So I told her let's try it out for a couple weeks. I know the first week is going to be shaky regardless because he hasn't met her. He hasn't even seen her face yet. Um, he was not near me when I was doing the online meeting, so he's literally never even looked upon her. She's going to be brand, brand, brand new to him the day that she shows up here for the first time. So I said that first day is probably going to be a learning curve for everyone, so let's not really take that as the example of this is what it's going to be like. Maybe by the second week we'll have a better picture of like, okay, is he too tired? Is he just over it, you know, is he willing to, to go along with the, the whole thing? And based on how that goes, maybe we'll continue Thursdays for now, or maybe you're gonna have to figure out how to make Wednesdays work. I would prefer Wednesdays, even though it's nice having a day off so that I can do house things or, or channel things or whatever on that day. Um, I still think that he'll do better work if we do things on Wednesday instead of having to cram so much into a Thursday, but I want to give him the opportunity to show us what's going to work best for him. So tentatively, Thursdays are the new hell days, or Thursdays are hell days again. I just dyed my hair in the last episode, so in case you haven't seen that, you would have missed that, but I just threw some green over this. I didn't bleach it again or anything. I just had the green, so I thought, why not? Let me go ahead and do it. It's been over a year probably since I've dyed my hair. So I just caught, you know, I caught a vibe and said, let me go with it. I'm currently on episode one of season four of Doctor Who. And this is one of my favorite seasons, mostly because I think this might be my favorite Doctor Companion combination. Um, this is the season with Donna Noble, played by Catherine Tate, and obviously Ten, which is played by David Tennant, and they're real life like besties. So their comedic timing and their like rapport and chemistry on the show is top notch. It's so, so, so good. <clears throat> and also in this season, we get to meet for the first time River Song, and River Song is without a doubt 100% my absolute favorite character in all of Doctor Who, her story and her lore is so rich. Um, she's written beautifully by Moffat. I have to give Moffat credit for her. Um, she's played brilliantly by Alex Kingston. And she's just everything. Like, the best parts of Doctor Who for me are all exemplified by the character and the backstory, etc of River Song and how she has interwoven herself in so many points and even regenerations of the Doctor's life. She's not officially a companion, which is why I can't say she's my favorite companion, because she's not. Um, not in the traditional sense, but absolute favorite character. I don't know how anybody could ever be. She might be my favorite character, like, in anything, honestly. Um, and we meet her for the first time in this season. So 
very excited about that. So this is, uh, I again, probably my favorite season of all of Doctor Who. Unfortunately, I can never tell people, just watch this season. If you only watch one thing, watch this season. Because if you're not familiar with all the things that brought us here, then there are certain things throughout the season that are not going to hit the way that they're supposed to. That you're not going to feel as deeply as you should because you don't realize how important it was to get to this point finally or you don't realize everything that it took to get here so um i really do feel that unfortunately and i say that just because again that first season is really hard to get through it just is but it's also important because it's building a foundation unfortunately you need to watch the whole show because all of it builds upon itself and if you miss anything then suddenly nothing makes sense but when everything does make sense, it's just all so brilliant that you're going to be happy you put in the, the time, basically. I swear, I sound like I'm getting paid to tell you this, but I just really, really, really love this show. And I wish more people, I mean, it's not like it's unpopular, but I wish more people in my life anyways were as into it as I am because there's just so much here to talk about. And I feel like I don't have anybody to talk about it with. So anyways, for today, we're going to enjoy our last non-hell day Thursday for the foreseeable future. Kiddo has two things. He's actually still asleep. I gotta go wake him up. Um, but that's happening. And then tomorrow should be a regular schedule as well. Potentially, my husband's going fishing with my dad again this weekend. This is becoming like a regular thing, which is good for them. But sucks for me because then it's like another day that is just me and the kiddo home alone. And then Sunday, we're going back to my parents' house. So it's like, never get a chance to just chill. Like me, I never get a chance to just chill. So for weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks. Months and months and years and years if we're being honest. But, you know. Anyways, that's what's going on. So happy Thursday. So it's Friday morning. Good morning, guys. Um, Kiddo has decided to put on Warm Bodies. Uh, on the TV, which is a horror romance comedy. Um, not necessarily something that I feel is appropriate, but he's he's decided he wants this on for some reason. And speaking of other grown-ass man things that my grown-ass man of a son is doing that I don't necessarily co-sign, he woke up this morning um, kind of demonstrating that he was hurting back here and I used my little dentist kit to check him out and it looks to me like he might be sprouting his very first wisdom tooth. Um, I remember I got my first wisdom tooth at about his age, 12, 13 years old, and it was extremely uncomfortable. I did eventually end up getting two of my wisdom teeth removed, but I want to say I was like 18, 19, 20 years old when that happened. Um, and they did tell me I had to eventually go back and get the other two removed, but I never did. And I'm fine. That was almost 20 years ago, and I'm still kicking. Um, I was telling the speech therapist all this, and I said to her, dentists are like mechanics of the body. They always find something wrong even when there's nothing there, and if you go to three different ones, you're gonna get three different opinions. And she was like, wow, I've never heard that before. And I said, yeah, it just came from my brain, but I think I might embroider it on a pillow or something because it sounds kind of poignant. And she's like, yeah, yeah, I agree. Um, so there you go. Uh, dentists are the mechanics of the body. I'm hoping, I mean, every body is different. Every person is different and everybody's going to experience this sort of thing differently. But I, like I said, me personally, I remember getting my first wisdom tooth at about this age and I didn't need to get anything removed for six, seven or eight years later. Um, he's meant to go to the dentist, I, I believe in March is his next appointment. Obviously, if he's showing signs of distress, if he's in obvious pain, if it starts to interfere with his eating or drinking, then I'll make it a point to go earlier. But, um, I mean, he's eating right now and he seems fine. He was just kind of pointing it out to me that like, hey, this is a thing that's going on. And sure enough, there is in fact a thing going on. So, um, that's something that's happening that I have to keep an eye on. He did do fantastic in his first session of the day though. Mm -hmm. Really, really great job. I'm very proud of him. He did amazing work. And now we have another session in a couple hours. 
and then we're done for the week. Um, my mom should be coming over in a little while, so I'm trying to get some editing done now because I don't know how much time I'm going to have in the rest of the day, all things considered. But I do want to get some editing done. There goes the AC, of course, because I'm talking. Lots of editing done today. And I'm trying to think what else I have on my list. I feel like editing is the bulk of it. Perhaps. Well, if I think of anything else or if something interesting occurs, I'll let you all know about it. But for right now, that's what's happened so far today. That's what's going on today. My dad was kind of considering doing like a family, not fishing trip, but like just us all going out to hang out on the boat this weekend. Um, but as far as I know, the notion of, hey, maybe we should do this is as far as anybody's gotten planning wise. So maybe it won't happen. I was really hoping to take the guy to the animal sanctuary park. I don't want to say the word out loud because then he's going to go, yeah, let's do that. Um, and I won't spell it either because he can spell, but hopefully you know what I mean. Um, I've been saying for weeks, he's been asking for weeks to go and I've been saying for weeks, we should do that this weekend. Um, but then other things pop up or other people go ahead and make plans and you know, that's kind of pushed to the side. So if the boating adventure happens, fine, then I guess we're doing that. And if it doesn't, then hopefully we're able to make that other thing work. But either way, I'd really love to take my son out to do something fun this weekend because it's been a hot minute. And um, whatever happens or doesn't, I will let you guys know all about it, obviously. So for now, happy Friday. Hey there, my lovely friends. It is Saturday afternoon. I've spent a very busy morning doing stuff around the house, surprising no one. Um, there's always a lot to do around here, but I feel like this weekend, this week in particular, there's like a lot more because we've had a couple weeks off of in-person therapy. And I'm not saying that the tidiness of my house is contingent on whether or not we have in-person therapy, but I will say that I am likelier to let things slide. In particular, the messes that my son makes with his toys. I'm a little more lenient about that when I know that there's not anybody non-family related coming over. This room kind of being case in point. Um, there's currently three three by two puzzles on the floor right now. So it looks like our floor is covered in like a giant multicolored area rug and it's just giant puzzles. My son's taken bins out of the shelves. He's taken books out of the shelves. There's another puzzle just like in pieces over there. There's stuff everywhere. And the reason for that is because <laughs> when we're doing teletherapy, as long as the table is clear, we're fine. And when we're doing physical therapy, as long as the majority of the floor is clear, we're fine. So kind of behind the scenes, the room is allowed to look a little wild because at the end of the day, why am I gonna put so much effort into it? This is my son's playroom, he's gonna play. The moment I clear things up, he's just gonna wreck them again. It's just the nature of anybody that has kids, you already know how it goes. Whenever there's a playroom or a play area, a designated space that's just meant for your kid and their toys, chances are most of the time on most days, it's not going to be super, super tidy, guest ready, right? So on days that I know that we have in-person therapy, those are the days that I make it a point to make the entire room 3D. <laughs> completely completely tidy and I haven't had necessity to do that in the last couple weeks so this room in particular is kind of out of control his bedroom is usually fine but it could use some tidying up because he does have a few books like on the floor and stuff and typically his floor is completely clear um, the living room again another three maybe four puzzles all over the living room um, it just the whole house who needs carpet we have wall-to-wall -wall area rugs made of cardboard so I've been cleaning up all the general, like the common areas today, and later I'm gonna move on to both bedrooms, but then this room in particular, again, because I'm gonna put forth all this effort and then Kittle's just gonna come through and tornado it up anyways, I'm actually gonna save this 
for doing like a full situation on Wednesday because Thursday is the day that the in-person therapist is coming for the first time actually. So that's what's been going on today. I've been tidying up, I've been vacuuming, I've been cleaning, I've been organizing. Hubby's currently not here because last minute, I guess the tides turned literally. So the weather is looking good tomorrow for a fishing trip. So my dad and my husband are gonna go fishing. And so my husband just went over there to kind of get the boat ready, like to kind of prepare, uh, pre-prepare, prepare kind of alludes to it being prepared, right? Like, you know what I mean? He's going over there to start the preparations so that tomorrow early in the morning, there's less to do for them to go out and fish. Um, my mom, I guess, is gonna come pick me and kiddo up so that we could head over to her house and hang out and then just wait for everybody to reconvene there uh, because I've been really craving pot roast. So she decided she was gonna make me pot roast. So I'm very excited about that. But yeah, so I'm trying to do all of the things today so that tomorrow I can just focus on family time, especially since I'm not going to be home. I'm not even going to be in my car. So it's just what it is. Um, today's been really good though, very productive so far. And I've gotten through, like I'm, I'm ahead of my list. I like to break down my day into like, these are all the things I need to do today. This is how much time I have. And based on that, I can devote this many minutes to each task. And if I have any extra time, then that's for me, right? That's that's how I always make up my to-do lists. And as it currently stands, I'm ahead of the curve. I've checked off more things than I've allowed minutes to elapse, if that makes sense. So I'm feeling really good about where I am so far and I feel like there's no reason whatsoever that all of the things that I intend to do today won't get done. So. Hope you're having a great Saturday. I hope it's productive or exciting or relaxing or whatever you want it to be. And um, honestly, I'm probably not gonna, well, you might see me make dinner later because hubby was craving my chicken bacon corn chowder, which is actually a Disneyland copycat recipe. I already have it on the channel. I'll post that video up here. And it's gluten and dairy free and he doesn't even realize it. My husband is usually, he's a very picky eater. He always has been. Um, and whenever I tell him, oh yeah, this is gluten and dairy free, unless it's like obvious that it's supposed to be gluten and dairy free, like a steak, he'll look at it and go, it is. And he just won't even taste it. Just because I made it, I adapted it gluten and dairy free, automatically it must be inferior to the original version. And every time I've made this soup, he's housed it and then just raved about how delicious it is, how amazing it is. It's his favorite kind of soup. Chicken, bacon, corn chowder, his favorite kind of soup. And my version, according to him, is the best he's ever had. And I've adapted it to make it gluten and dairy free. So that goes to show you just how good this soup is. So I'm going to make that in a little while. So maybe I'll show you bits of that. But otherwise, I don't really expect to be recording too much more today. So in the spirit of that, Happy Saturday. Good Sunday morning, friends. Uh, for those of you keeping track, I'm on episode six of season four of Doctor Who, uh, The Doctor's Daughter, which is kind of funny, you know, sort of, not really. So the doctor's daughter, this is Dr. Ten right now, um, that's on the show, David Tennant. And um, the doctor's daughter is literally, like on the show, kind of like a clone, not clone per se, but she exists because they took his DNA and created a person, right? So she's his daughter. But the actress that plays the daughter, that plays the doctor's daughter, is actually Dr. Five's real life daughter, um, Davison, who a couple episodes ago, I showed you guys a picture of me at a convention. I actually met him. I met her actual real life dad um, at that con. So she in real life is the doctor's daughter, just not Dr. Ten, Dr. Five's daughter. But in real life, she's married to Dr. Ten. 
So the doctor's daughter is the doctor's daughter, but she's also the doctor's wife. It's a whole thing. So anyways, that's what I'm watching right now. Oh my gosh, phone, stop. My dad and my husband are out on the boat right now and I just got an update from them and they've actually been catching fish. It finally happened. Um, so I'm glad for them. Obviously, as you guys can see, we did not end up going to the zoo this weekend and we did not go on our family boating outing. Um, C'est la vie. We do have some fun stuff in the works for kiddo coming up soon. Um, but I still really wish that we'd gotten to do something as a family this weekend. I'm just excited that the guys finally got their fishing done though because the whole thing is that they have a fishing buddy that always has really good luck except when he goes out with my dad and my husband and so he messaged them over the weekend and said hey just so you guys know on Sunday at these secret top secret coordinates it's supposed to be really really good fishing and then yesterday he sent them another text and he's like, hey, I didn't go out today, but a friend of mine did and he hit up those coordinates I told you about and look at everything he caught. And he had a picture, he sent them a picture of these like three dudes with about 30 fish in front of them of all kinds. So they got really, really excited and I'm glad that to some degree anyways, it's working out for them today. They're finally catching fish after all this time and after all these attempts. So I'm glad for them. Maybe this will scratch that itch and they won't feel the need to go fishing every single weekend now. Or, more likely, it'll just make it worse and they're going to be chasing that dragon until the end of time. But, that's what's happened so far today. I'm doing a few little things around the house and then I'm going to have my mom come pick us up so we can head over to her house because that's where they're going to end up with the boat when it's all said and done. So that way we can all congregate there have lunch, dinner, whatever, hopefully watch at least the first football game because there's one at 3 and there's one at 6.30. And um, and then I guess come home and wind down and, and prepare to start the whole week over again tomorrow. So let me go through my list real fast and make sure that there's nothing else kind of pending or I don't think so. Today I've kind of left it kind of chill because... I knew that I was going to be at my parents' house, so there's no sense in, like, putting a bunch of stuff on my list that I'm likely not going to get to do. But, yeah, um, that's pretty much the plan. So I'll bring you guys along to the extent that I'm able. But for now, happy Sunday. I just came out here to water my plants, and my inch plant is flowering. It's got a really pretty little tiny purple flower. I didn't even realize that these guys did that. So that's very exciting to me. Surprising no one, it is now Monday and I didn't do an outro last night, but it's fine. We're here. Let's just quickly wrap everything up. Uh, football, man. Both games went exactly the opposite of how I hoped they'd go. I was really hoping for Lions and Ravens in the Super Bowl. And I would be rooting for the Lions in that case, although it would be a super long shot. Um, but the Chiefs are going to the Super Bowl instead. And um, and then the 49ers, it looked good for the Lions at first. And we left my parents' house when we came home. And when I got home, my mom was like, are you watching the game? And we weren't. So I looked it up and yeah, sure enough, we were losing and then we lost. So 49ers it is, which whatever is fine. I guess go 49ers because I'm still very much team whoever's not the Chiefs. So we'll see how that all goes. But um that's basically all we did yesterday. We were at my parents' house for a long, long, long time. <clears throat> my dad finally caught a fish. <laughs> so he's very, very happy about that. The curse is broken. So that happened. They came home. We were already there. Um, we ate. We watched the game. And we just kind of generally hung out. I did want to show you guys something because I got an unexpected surprise. Apparently my grandma had come by before we got there and she left me something that I was very much not expecting. It's not in great shape but it's still kind of amazing. So this, unfortunately it's halved and there's a loose page and it might be missing pages 
but this is the Cocina Criolla cookbook and this cookbook is basically or was the staple cookbook of any and every Cuban housewife that ever existed. Everybody had this cookbook in their home. Oh my gosh, it even smells like her. That's awesome. I think I might keep it wrapped in this plastic just so that it keeps smelling like her. <laughs> um, but the thing about that cookbook is that once Fidel took over, they stopped producing it. So if you didn't already have it, you weren't going to get a new one. And so all of the ones that exist today still are ones that people were able to bring over from Cuba and kind of pass down generation to generation. And if you can find one online now in good condition, it will cost you well over a thousand dollars. Because again, they've, they're very old. I think they were last printed in the 50s. And um, the only way to get one is by somebody passing it along to you. This one is not in great shape because apparently when my aunt was younger, she used to rip out the pages for fun. But it's still obviously very much a family heirloom at this point and a big piece of Cuban history that cannot be replicated. And I'm very, very, very happy to have it. I'm also very, very happy to potentially make some recipes from it and share it with you guys. So that's a very cool surprise that I got yesterday. But that brings us to today. A lot going on today. A lot going on this week. Um, not least of which, we're finally starting with our new in-person therapist this week. But I'll get to all of that in the next episode, plus my battery on the camera is about to die and I don't want it to cut me off. So I hope you guys had a great weekend. Let me know what you were up to. Let me know what you're expecting for the week ahead. And as always, I want to thank you all so much for being here and watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, I hope you'll please give it a big thumbs up. I'd also love it if you would subscribe and click the notification bell because I post at least three times a week and I wouldn't want you to miss a minute. Thanks so much again for watching. Bye!